Um, okay, pre start presenting the project. It's called Adaptive Decentralized Federated Learning in Wireless Mesh Network, FlashNet. Um, we're basically, well, three key persons. Lu Wei from uh, Texas Tech University, Zhang Hang Liu from Mississippi State University, and myself, uh, Felix Freitag from the Technical University of Catalonia. The, the summary of the project is we, we had the, uh, the project in the open call three from NGA Atlantic. We were three partners, two from the US and one from Europe, ourselves. The project had six months duration from October 21 to March 22. So it's almost one year almost that it's over. And um, in this project, we actually we started a, a new collaboration between uh, us and the US partners. We did not know us before. We had not worked before together. So it started with uh, this NGA Atlantic project. And um, that is the objective of the project was to design and evaluate adaptive decentralized federated learning in a wireless mesh network. The, the project was about um, the core, the technical part was about federated learning. Um, federated learning is a machine learning technique to collaboratively train a machine learning model on different nodes. Um, it's quite um, interesting or popular because uh, the training data uh, does not have to leave the nodes. So the data is not moved to somewhere else, which is very interesting for privacy preservation of this data. So the federated learning is related to, to data governance as well. Um, and in, in, the, in this uh, the FlashNet project, we, we mainly used federated learning on the level of or uh, in edge computing in edge environments. Um, <clears throat> we had a, a test bed um, that we used for the experimentation. It is uh, located in Barcelona. It's a test bed with uh, mini computers, uh, like you see in, in these uh, pictures, uh, that were distributed at different nodes um, of the wireless mesh network in Barcelona. So we, have, we had different types of these uh, mini computers, so we have different types of hardware, and also um, the, the links between the nodes were, were pretty heterogeneous. There were some very good wireless links with a high bandwidth, um, but also we had some poor, poor links very, with uh, very little capacity. Um, <clears throat> but this testbed gave us um, the, the a heterogeneous environment that we, we needed to make our experimentation. Um, so uh, along the project, Basically, it was uh, experimental driven research. We, we conducted a lot of experiments uh, to, to find designs that could adapt to, to the heterogeneous conditions at, at the network edge. So uh, it was basically this, this circle of um, preparing uh, a new design of the federated learning protocol. Um, implement this this design, then uh, create Docker images, um, <clears throat> push the Docker images to the testbed node, create uh, launch containers, um, <clears throat> make the federated learning experiment, and then collect the results, analyze analyze the results, and and evaluate the design that that we had proposed. So there were many many rounds of this, this circle along the experiment. And for instance, <clears throat> it was very clear uh, how this heterogeneity in, in the network and in the hardware in the nodes affected the performance of federated learning. So uh, the slower nodes or in terms of hardware or in terms of bandwidth, they always uh, delayed the, the training process 
this was very uh, clear from from the least from experiments, and um, it's also well suggested that we need to do something to adapt to these uh, conditions. And well, we we developed um, new designs to to exploit this uh, heterogeneity to work under these edge conditions and. Basically, the, the design, the new protocol is able to adapt the workload according to, to the client's capacity uh, dynamically. And, and this way, um, the, the, actually the, the performance of the federated learning training is better. I think the accuracy increases uh, if you use this uh, new design uh, without uh, delaying, without taking more time. But the, the results of the project, well, they are, they are the scientific results because we, we found this new, new adaptive design for federated learning, which um, we think was an interesting result. It, it was not available in the, in the current related work. Most, most works in federated learning are done with simulations and in cloud computing environments. So, so we were different in this sense because we used real uh, conditions and uh, edge, edge conditions. And we achieved some joint publications with, uh, with this work. Um, and then there were also the non-technical results um, uh, well, because we have achieved this uh, collaboration among us three, um, which still, uh, continued a bit uh, after the project with doing a bit more on this adaptive design. And also we had, well, we discussed some idea to continue uh, the, the, the results for the, for the tiny edge where, where also adaptivity is needed. And yes, and these uh, are the contacts of us three. And we've also published the code in the open, no, open Git repository. Thank you. Thank you, Felix, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Well. Um, any question from the room, from home? Jim? I think there's someone in the room that has a question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need more glasses. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here. Felix, sorry. Thank you for this nice. Yeah. All the way up. <coughs> so this um, no outstanding work. My question would maybe seems to be a little bit silly, but in the following, uh, can we consider the federated learning as one way to fix the data imbalance. Can you speak a bit louder? It's hard to hear. Or say that yes. question. Can we consider that? Uh, I, I heard the first. Felix, do you hear me? Yes. So my question is, can we consider that um, federated learning is one way to fix the problem of data imbalance issue? Data imbalance. Yes, I give you an example. You know, data when the data is imbalanced, it means that the, there is the major classes and minor classes. And since in federated learning, we suppose that the models are going to the data. Yes. So suppose that one the node of in in Barcelona is we have uh, some data about the minor class and data in which is in uh, in Grenoble I would say this major class it means that yes, yes it means that by migrating by mitigating by uh, hmm. mixing blending the model the data it would be data and data the data is balanced but since we are not allowed to move the data and the model who's the model who's going to the data 
Yes. Um, can, yes. Um, yes, this is like federated learning with non identically distributed data. This is yes. one of the research topics. Um, I think the model can, because you share the model, I think the model is able to, at the end, know both classes because you will share and merge the model even if you train it at the two nodes with different data, but at the end it will uh, be able to, to know both types, I think. Okay, and the one, uh, uh, if I would like to see the device in your words, you know, the federated learning is by design is uh, uh, key to be attacked to this, uh, uh, to this uh, Byzantine attacks and other types of attacks. Would you think, are you thinking that you have to can secure your federated learning network? This is another topic. Uh, it can be, you know, this case it can be used with blockchain. I was reading some papers that you can secure and make this federated learning more resilient by using blockchain technique to secure. Yes, I, I, I saw papers about combining federated learning with blockchain to secure the models and to make sure they are not tampered like this. Um, we have not really worked in, in the security of federated learning, but, but th there is there is this combination uh, in the research that you mentioned. Okay, yeah. thank you. Just one um, last question, Felix. Um, the, the work that you're looking at on the um, at Tiny Edge, could you maybe just elaborate a little bit about this uh, follow-up work? Yes, this is a uh, um, <clears throat> this is the microcontroller the IoT part of of the Edge, which is now getting uh, machine learning models. Um, they still don't have a lot of federated learning, which is very new. But uh, in the IoT, the machine learning is is uh, getting into it. And uh, there we have many heterogeneous conditions like low battery, uh, very different connectivity, and dif different computing capacity. So these heterogeneous conditions we had at, in the wireless mesh network in, at the tiny edge in the IoT are even stronger. So I think this adaptive way of doing federated learning is, is even more important in, in IoT. And this is, I think, an opportunity to to continue what we found out. Yes, it sounds sounds very interesting. Um, you might you might also just check there is some new NGI projects um, that have started um, in in this space. Um, you know, looking at, at more the you know the edge and IoT as well. Yes, I think that's where things are moving to. Yeah, you know, we can pass on the links uh, to those those projects. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Felix. Thank you.